Hi guys, now I have shared with you the classics that I am hoping to read in 2020. I thought I would share with you classics I think everybody should read this year. I have compiled a list of the books that I have enjoyed over the past few years, the classics that I think are must reads. So if you're new to reading classics or haven't read any of these then I hope you'll enjoy the video and if you have read some of these I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments afterwards. So we'll start by talking about North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and I'm going to be hosting a read-along of this during February and March as part of my Classics Community 2020 reading challenge. So if you are interested in reading this I will leave a link in the description to the Goodreads page and I'll also be posting about it throughout the month and doing a video at the end of March all about my thoughts on North and South and discussing the themes and ideas in the book. The main character in North and South is called Margaret Hale and she lives with her mother and father in the south of England in a place called Helston which is somewhere that she adores but after her father loses faith they move to the north of England where they decide to start a new life but life in the north and the south is very different and Margaret finds it very difficult to adjust, particularly when she meets a man called Mr Thornton who is far from pleasant. If you've enjoyed books like Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen then you'll really enjoy this because it has a similar vibe going on in terms of the emotions expressed by the characters because Margaret and Mr Thornton do remind me of Lizzie and Mr Darcy. Also on the topic of Jane Austen one of the things I find most frustrating about her books sometimes is that she doesn't acknowledge the political situations happening at the time but Elizabeth Gaskell comments on the situations happening in the north of England particularly around workers rights in the mills owned by mill owners and she isn't afraid to wade into the issue and comment on these things. It also has a fantastic adaptation which is probably one of my favourite book to tv adaptations starring a young Richard Armitage and I could watch it on repeat for hours on end because it's fantastic. So if you haven't read North and South yet then please do or you might like to reread it along with us for the classic community 2020 reading challenge and that is again in February and March. When I was around 11 or 12 I studied The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett at school and I loved this book. I recently reread it in the summer of 2019 and I discovered other aspects to it that I loved even more than I did the first time and I think that 2020 will be a good time to read this book if you haven't already because there is a new adaptation coming out. I love the old adaptation, I think there's something very classic about it, very timeless, but I'm interested to see what they do with this new more modern and up-to-date version. The Secret Garden follows Mary who is a young girl living in India and after her parents death she moves to England to live with her uncle in this very grand house in Yorkshire and Mary is known as Mistress Mary quite contrary after the nursery rhyme because at the start of the book she is a despicable character who you just want to tell her to stop being so pathetic. She's very frustrating but over the course of the novel she grows as she becomes closer to nature as she discovers the key to a secret garden and then goes beyond the walls and it is a book all about the healing power of nature and the outdoors and there's a wonderful character in here called Dickon who I love. He talks to the animals, he's friends with the animals and I love how there is a group of young people who all join together to improve each other and they all grow. So whilst I have read this again recently and I'm unlikely to read it again during this year, I think that if you haven't already this is the perfect opportunity to read it and I really hope that the new film will mean that more people discover the book. The new year is a time when lots of people look to improve themselves in whatever way that may be. We set 
New Year's resolutions, we try to challenge and push ourselves to become better people. And at the end of 2019, I read How Much Land Does a Man Need by Leo Tolstoy. I just couldn't stop thinking about this book because it is a book that will really make you think about the way that you are living and your approach to your worldly possessions. This is almost a fable in the vein of Aesop's fables about a man who makes a bargain with the devil and it ultimately ends up with him wanting more and more land to the point where it verges on dangerous for him. I won't give any spoilers as to the end but the book does look at consumerism and I think it can be related to the society in which we live in today. Even though Leo Tolstoy wrote this during the 19th century we still live in the same vein as he is talking about. We might not be gathering land but we have this desire always, I think as a human race, for more things. We are never satisfied with what we've got. And whilst there are people who obviously are, I think as a whole it is sad to see people constantly wanting more when they have a perfectly adequate amount. And I'm not talking about people who are wanting, but those who aren't wanting but still want. It may be a very little book, but it is certainly one that won't leave you for a long time after you've finished it. There may be some of you watching this who aren't as confident reading classics and a book that I think you'll really love if this is the case is The Diary of a Nobody by George Grossmith, which is also illustrated by his brother Whedon Grossmith. I read this quite recently and I was surprised at how much I loved it. I wasn't expecting there to be so much substance to the book and it's about a man called Mr Pooter who is writing diary entries about his everyday life in the 1880s. It is hilarious and I love the wordplay, these funny things that Mr Pooter would laugh at but nobody else around him would laugh at, but I would laugh at because I found it really funny. He's a very clumsy character who makes lots of mistakes socially and nothing is ever quite going his way but somehow he still manages. I think this would be a good classic to start the year off with to get you in good spirit spirits or if you've read a particularly sad classic recently then you might like to read this to cleanse your palate. Then we have The Waves by Virginia Woolf. I love Virginia Woolf's writing and I think that you should read The Waves this year because it is a book that you will get so much out of. Even if you have already read it I would recommend rereading it because when it comes to Virginia Woolf I never feel when I read her books like I understand everything and so when I get to reread them I am able to focus on the details and think wow what was going on in her brain because she was such a genius. The Waves follows a group of friends who are connected in their youth and they then grow up and are connected through one character who we never get to really see or get to know and that in itself is a very clever way of crafting this narrative and this really is about the narrative lives and inner lives of those group of friends. I think the best way to read any Virginia Woolf novel is to carve out some time when you can dedicate your time to only reading the book. I like to read her books quickly and then revisit them again in the future to get everything out of them, to drag every small detail out and think about what it means and what her original meaning and intention was. So if you've got the time to dedicate to Virginia Woolf and the waves, maybe over the summer when you're on holiday and can luxuriate in her writing, please do read her books and particularly the waves. And then finally a book that I'm kind of hesitant to add to this video because I think that I've talked about it too much recently. I'm really sorry I am talking about it now so then I can stop talking about it for a bit but you'll see it crop up again in the future I'm sure. This is the Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton which I read at the end of November and I 
I just love it. I love it with every ounce of my being. It had to be in this video where I'm recommending books that I think everybody should read this year because if you haven't read The Age of Innocence, what are you waiting for? Edith Wharton is one of my new favourite authors and I'm so looking forward to reading more of her books over this year. And The Age of Innocence was a great place to start. I'd never read anything by her before, knew very little, but as soon as I read the first page, I knew I was in love. The Age of Innocence is set in 1870s New York after the American Civil War and is about a woman, Countess Ellen Olenska, who returns from Europe to New York where her marriage has failed. And this is a point of contention in New York society. People aren't happy and they don't think it reflects well on them that Ellen's marriage has failed and she has fleed from her husband. And it's also about a character called Newland Archer and he he is a stereotypical version of what a man was like in New York at this time. He has grown up in this society, he knows his place and how he should be acting, but when he meets Ellen he starts to realise that there might be more to life than he first thought and this starts a passionate relationship between them that really blossoms as the book goes on and at times it's shocking and you really feel for the characters and it has one of the best endings that just made me go what has just happened and that is the reason that I think you should read it because you really do go on a journey with this book. I feel like that's quite a cliche thing to say but you start off with these characters that are quite unlikable at times but by the end of the book you are rooting for them and Edith Wharton is a marvel. I love her. I love her. I'm so excited for all the Edith Wharton I'm going to read this year but if you haven't read Edith Wharton yet you need to read The Age of Innocence. I think it is the perfect place to start. So those are the classics that I think everybody should read in 2020. I'd love to know in the comments if there are any you think I should have added to my list or any that you would add to your own list of books you think everybody should read this year and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!